Uh, what was your message to um, Jake after the game? You know, it, the, the message was obviously we got to win. Let's celebrate the win, celebrate the moment, uh, get, be in the moment at the time. You know, obviously it was a hard fought game and, and just to see our team respond back from adversity, you know, um, having a score obviously at the end of the first half and the end of, end of the second half. Um, you know, there's times throughout the year where we faced adversity and we necessarily didn't respond. Uh, and to see the response of our team and obviously this team is still growing, this team is still maturing, uh, that was a positive. So at that moment after the game and still on, um, we want to try to build on the positives and, and focus in that direction. Josh, I saw you were down on the field for uh, the game on Saturday. Uh, why did you decide to change that up, I guess? Well, you know, I, I felt like it, it would give me an opportunity to uh, to bring some poise to the sideline for the players, obviously, to be able to see in their eyes, uh, get a feel for them throughout the game. Um, obviously, we had faced some tough adversity the week before with some turnovers, and, and really it was a it's kind of a rallying moment of just being able to instill some confidence uh, being able to talk and get communication going on the sideline. Uh, you know, when you're up in the box and you see adversity happen, there's, you really feel like there's nothing you can do to, to, to you know, help, you know, uh, ease that moment. And so I thought it was important for me, you know, they're constantly hearing my voice, they're constantly seeing my face in practice, um, to give them that, that, you know, that reminder, you know, things, you know, if things don't go well, you know, we got to respond. And, uh, you know, it was, um, it was good to get back down to the field. And uh, obviously, uh, as we move forward, we'll continue to make the best decisions there. Right, who was the person asking? Who was up in the box for you? Obviously, I, I, actually, we uh, moved Coach Ponce up, and then we moved uh, another one of our graduate assistants as well. And, and this week, you're still undecided whether or not you'll be able. Yeah, to still, you know, <laughs> I like to say it made a difference, but <laughs> it did. You know, uh, it was still a tough, hard, hard fought battle, and so you know, you're just trying. You, you know, you're, you're you're going through all the different things that you could possibly do to help. You know, bring confidence and, and momentum to your team, and so. Um, you know, as I said, you know, obviously, you know, we still got to grow. We still got long ways, long ways to go, um, and we're just trying to build. You know, each day to, to continue to, to build on what we're building. For a quarterback, is it is it a tough toe to line between being aggressive and limiting turnovers? You know, I think it is. I think especially after you're coming over, coming after a game where you've you know you've given up a high number of sacks, high number of turnovers, right? You want to be smart and. And let me say this too, tremendous credit to our defense, you know, because the, the confidence and, and faith that we have in our defense right now and, you know, our defense ability to go out there and play great football. Uh, you know, we felt like last week we were going to minimize as many risks and as minimize as many turnovers as possible to be able to win that game. Um, you can't win games, you know, giving up sacks, can't win games, create turnovers. And so ultimately, as we hit down this final stretch, we've got to decide what's best for our team to win each and every week and, and put our team in position to win. And, and you know, um, we did we did some things, obviously, when you bring in a new quarterback that, you know, we, we wanted to keep him under uh, poise. We wanted to not let the game get rattled in that situation uh, and limit some of the some of the mistakes that we were making. Coach, how how old is Jakari Brown? <laughs> 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 well, I'll answer both, okay. So. Uh, Jakari Brown got uh, you know, some more plays. Uh, he actually threw a pass in this game. Uh, what can you say about his play, and what should we expect from him going forward? Well, I think it's evident right now, if you watch our team, right, Jakari is probably one of our top playmakers on our team, right? Just positive plays continue to happen with him. Um, he's probably one of the most dynamic runners we have. I don't know, maybe he's maybe our fastest player on offense right now at this point. Um, and so, you know, you got to find as many creative ways uh, to use someone like that that has the ability to keep the chains moving, bring positive plays. Um, one of the things that he also does, right, he brings positive energy to our sideline. Um, when you see Jakari go in the game and you see him make plays, you see the energy, the excitement of our team increase. And so um, we need that. You know, we need that desperately right now as a team. We need that desperately as an offense. And so um, he gives us an, an opportunity there. And obviously, we'll continue to grow his package. Um, you know, obviously, teams are going to look at him a lot of different ways with the more they see him. Um, but he's a quarterback for us. He's, he's always been a quarterback. He's a quarterback. Um, and he will always remain a quarterback. And we've got to continue to use him in that fashion. Uh, Coach, how much did TVD help, um, uh, help Jake this past week being there on the sideline? Did he, did, you know? Well, Tyler was definitely a, uh, a good resource. Uh, you know, obviously continue to talk to Jake on the sideline in between series, talking through coverage, plays, reads, and everything. Um, and then there was a lot that Tyler was also processing for himself, uh, being able to see he was giving me great information. Um, and I was talking constantly back with him and uh, ultimately, you know, we continue to, to move forward in, in, in his rehab and, you know, we look forward to preparing all those guys as we move forward. Coach, so, you know, with Jakari Brown, uh, he 
got back to pass one time in that game. And how have you seen him grow as a passer you know, through his freshman season? Well, you know, that's the area where he wants to develop the most, you know, as a complete passer. And, uh, you know, we've got, uh, we've got faith in his development. We're going to continue to push him, uh, continue to develop him. Because, you know, you see all his physical traits, right? That's what makes him special. Um, but he's also a very smart kid being able to handle a lot. And right now, I'll tell you, you know, we're putting a lot on his plate, a lot of different packages, a lot of different formations, a lot of different runs uh, and passes. And, and, you know, he's going through that. And, and um, he goes through practice. He doesn't go through practice as a gimmick guy. You know, he goes through practice as a quarterback. Um, so he's making those throws. And unfortunately, obviously, um, you know, he didn't have his best throw um, there on Saturday. But I've seen him complete that pass, you know, 10 times throughout the week and just kind of caught up in a nervous moment. And so, um, you know, we're going to continue developing him as a quarterback completely um, in practice. And then how important was it to plug Xavier Shepard back into the offense? Yeah, you know, uh, it, it was very important. You know, he's been a key piece that's been missing out of our offense. And obviously, uh, we knew going into the game, he was on a numbers count. You know, obviously, um, uh, we have a process in place uh, where we want to try to get everyone caught up to being 100%. And he's not quite there yet, but we feel good about the process that, he, that he's taken. And so being able to get him back on the, the sideline, being able to get him back in the game, obviously makes a critical play in a, in a special situation in the game. And I think he only finished with, you know, 12 or so snaps in the game. Um, but those, those 12 snaps are important to build to his confidence, build to his conditioning, um, but then ultimately take the next step in his rehab process to get him back fully acclimated to our team. Coach, I know you were talking about, or Mario was talking about, and you preparing all three quarterbacks possibly to play. Um, is there, we're talking about fine line states, is there a fine line between preparing TBD and not having him overdo it with the injury? I think there very is, and, and that's where we've got a tremendous uh, medical staff um, uh, that does a great job rehabbing our guys, getting them back to full speed. And one thing that you see with our medical staff, right, we're not going to take any shortcuts, right? We're going to make sure that everyone's healthy um, and prepared. And even, you know, guys like even like Xavier Restrepo, right, he was clawing at it to come back out there on the field two to three weeks ago, and it just wasn't the right time. Um, and so we're always going to protect our players with the best interest of, of their health, always first and foremost. I mean, we'll build off that, you know, um, we've experienced a lot of different injuries um, on offense. And so, you know, um, you know, the next man up approach is real. Um, we've got to prepare everyone for their opportunity to try to help make an impact in the game. Josh, you guys went heavy with, with Henry Parrish in this game. Just how do you sort of balance keeping his body healthy and for all that banging and then sprinkling other guys? Yeah, that's a that's a uh, that's a great question because Henry ran extremely hard. I mean, um, that was probably one of the hardest games I've seen a running back run uh, for a guy his size and stature. You know, um, physical in between the tackles, running over second level and third level defenders. Um, you know, just being able to get him back out there the last two weeks has injected our team with so much energy and confidence, and especially what, what we were able to do last week, right? It's been a tough sled in the last few weeks running the football. And, and so to inject that confidence in our offensive line, in our running backs, that we can do that. I mean, then Lucius Stanley coming in there, running the ball extremely hard, as well as Jakari. And so, um, you know, we're going to always have to continue to find that production uh, by group. I don't think one man can, can sit there and carry the ball 30, 30 times a game. I think, obviously, um, you're putting them at risk in that situation. And then we got tremendous confidence in our other guys. We got to get our confidence back uh, in Jalen Knight. We got to get him going uh, in that and, and those guys. And so um, we're just going to continue to push. You know, um, we got to work extremely hard throughout the week in practice, got to prepare extremely hard. Uh, and then when we have the opportunities, we have to go out and execute at a high level in games. And I think that's been the whole key. Just as a follow Time for two that. more. Um, I need a little more. With, with Adam and Jalen, Jalen, obviously, you know, we had the fumble issues. Um, are they not practicing up to the level? I mean, do you just have more faith in, in Lucius and Jake and um, Henry right now, you know, holding on with the ball? Just kind of the decision making there. Well, you know, it's um, credit to both kids because, you know, I, you know, we, we do have belief in, 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 in uh, Jalen and, and Thad, and, and they practice really hard. Uh, but you got to be able to carry that over to the games. And, and unfortunately, we, we face some adversity in games, you know, whether that's fumbles, whether that's making people miss in space, one-on-one -on -one opportunities, protection, all the whole things. And, and so right now, you know, we're just at that point in the season where, you know, you've got to start relying on, on, you know, consistency, you know, and I think that's a very important piece to us because when you look at us offensively, that's the piece that's been missing. You know, consistency in players being available, consistency in execution, everything, and, and top down. And uh, you know that falls that falls on that falls on me. And um, 
And, and uh, you know, we've got to just continue to build our players, continue to build them up, continue to get their confidence and trust in themselves and their abilities. That way they can go out on Saturday and execute at a high level. Um, you know, I think what's happened to a little bit of our guys is they work so hard throughout the week that that moment comes on Saturday and they necessarily don't get that same opportunity or maybe adversity strikes and they can't hang their heads on it, man. And, you know, fumbling obviously is part of the game. That's something that we want to eliminate. Um, but we've got to find ways to correct those things and move forward and not, not, not allow them to happen again. Hey Josh, last year went pretty perfectly for you, at least till the very, very end. And um, you come here and you're two thirds of the way through the season now, and it's been anything but. It's been a wild ride, a roller coaster. Um, I noticed at the end of the game last, you, you released a little emotion and ran down to the end zone and, and, and were part of the celebration and all that. What, talk a little bit about what, you know, how your head is and, and what this season has been like for you and going through those different experiences. You know, I think every year is different and uh, we ultimately all chose to be here uh, for a reason, to make an impact and, you know, uh, do we wish that impact obviously could be a lot sooner or faster than what we uh, wish it would take. Uh, yes, but we've all been around turnarounds. Um, I've been around multiple different turnarounds from uh, being a new staff, taking over a Vanderbilt program that was uh, at pretty much the bottom of the SEC and being able to win there and being able to be a part of a staff that took over a struggling Penn State program and being able to have success there. And so um, this is no different than any other challenges that I've been a part of in my, in my career. I've um, got tremendous faith in the coaches and Coach Cristobal and the vision that he has for this program. I um, mean, we all came here together to, to make an impact. And, and, you know, although we all came from very successful programs and you look across the board, everyone was having success, you know, we're in the moment now, you know, and, and um, you know, things haven't necessarily gone our way, whether it's injuries or wins, losses, uh, certain things, but we've got to have tremendous confidence in who we are as a staff, tremendous confidence in our players, um, and we have the right uh, program um, to move forward and, and you know coach has laid out the guidelines of what he wants the process of what it takes and we've got to stay committed to that process each and every day we've got to recruit at a very very high level um, we've got to develop at a very very high level um, and we've got to continue to, to create a, um, a, a a process of confidence for our players and also just being able to the philosophy of our program being able to, to drill that home to them and so um, we're going to continue to work at it you know it's been a it's been a tough year been a challenging year it's not over um, we still got a lot to play for, a lot to look forward to, uh, and it starts this week with a big rival. How does Khalil Brantley, how does Khalil Brantley physicality from the tight end position help the offense? Tremendous. Um, ton of credit to Khalil Brantley. What he was able to go in and do, and, and uh, you know, one of the things that Khalil has done is, is he's had to take on a little bit of the dirty work at the tight end position. You know, obviously being down uh, Elijah at that role, and obviously Will's had some some injuries along the way, but uh, if you saw the physical impact that Khalil brought to the game on Saturday, he did a tremendous job. I think that team that Virginia had some really talented defensive ends, and when you look at them nationally, they're in the top 15 in, in sacks. His impact in the run game affected those guys' ability to rush the passer. Um, he had multiple knockdowns where they were game-changing. I mean, went back, showed our offensive, uh, offensive unit those plays, and. Um, that's how you. That's how you create a mindset. You know. That's how you create belief. Uh, and, and what Khalil did is he created a role and opportunities for him moving forward. You know. He's got to continue to obviously prepare and practice at a very high level. Um, but he will be rewarded. You know. And, and we want all of our guys to buy in of what we're asking them to do and do it at a very high level. And he brought tremendous energy to our to our team. All right, coach.